plenty, plenty, plenty of videos out there telling you why you should get this bike, why you should get that bike. It's gonna have some pretty pictures with someone riding, riding footage on it and spinning out all the specs. This is not gonna be one of those videos. There's no affiliate link below. I'm not pushing you to buy a cargo bike. In fact, as you saw in the title, it is the opposite. There's not a lot of financial uh, reasons for people to tell you not to get something. But this is one of the videos where I am fully gonna tell you why you may not want a cargo bike. And I know a lot of you are like seeing these things marketed on websites, on your social media feeds, you're seeing it around town, everyone's smiling, happy, riding the e-bike all casually and it looks like a lot of fun. And it is, however, we're gonna talk about not just the ridership or ride experience, because that's covered all over the internet with hundreds of YouTube videos about that, okay? So you don't need more of that. What you need to know is that there's ownership logistics involved in a cargo bike. Majority of the time, you're not gonna be riding it and smiling about it. You're gonna be storing the bike. You may be repairing the bike. You may be maintaining the bike. You may need to bring it someplace further than you're able to ride or wanna ride, or maybe your starting location with a group of friends or whatever is gonna be somewhere out there where you need to put on a car, okay? So we're gonna go over all the reasons why you may not wanna get a cargo bike and consider a regular sized e-bike. I know though, I know you want to carry a bunch of stuff. You want to carry a bunch of stuff. Okay, I will tell you that that bike, let's get a little bit closer. This is a, as if there's such a thing as a standard e-bike. Okay, this is a non-cargo e-bike, okay? And if you wanted to, to get groceries, everyone's like, I want to get groceries. I'm not going to have a kid on there, but I'd like to have a kid on there as an option. Okay, well, a kid can go on here as an option. On the side, you can install a pannier. On the other side, you can install another pannier. And on the front, there's a basket here. And you can also wear a backpack. So you can carry a total of one, two, three, and backpack four bags of groceries. Actually, the front probably carry two. So six bags of groceries on a single regular e-bike. That is not a cargo bike. How many of you are going to be going grocery market and bring back home more than six bags full of groceries? I don't imagine a lot of you and not doing it that often. And if you do, there are drawbacks to it by taking this as opposed to something like that. I'm gonna tell you a secret. And that is the biggest regret of e-bike buyers is that the bike is too big and it's too heavy. Too big and too heavy. The bikes are always too big and too heavy compared to what they see on websites even when they're doing their measurements and stuff like that. And even when you see a guy riding it, it seems like it's a decent size. When you get it, it's bigger than you think. It's heavier than you think. Everyone may look very casual <laughs> as they're riding these things around big cities, but these are a lot harder to ride safely than a regular sized and regular weighted e-bike. This is extremely long. I had my wife back here the other day um, and it wobbles, okay, it's it's tough. I have two kids back here normally when I take them to and from school, and even though the weight of them two versus my wife is about the same, having one person back there versus having two kind of distributed weight across the back is, is different, okay? And so the weight itself is gonna be a challenge, okay? These cargo bikes are designed to carry weight, of course, and in order to carry high capacity, the frame itself needs to be durable enough to support that weight. And therefore the bike itself is going to be very heavy. So you're not really going to find a cargo bike that necessarily weighs a lot less than a normal bike or normal e-bike. So the weight and size is going to be a huge thing as far as the handling of the bike and maneuverability. And I understand a lot of you are like, I can ride a bike, I know how to ride bikes, not that big of a deal. I understand, but when you're throwing in, you know, crazy drivers, crazy pedestrians, hills, uh, less than perfect roads, weather, all of that is kind of against you and can make that exponentially more difficult to ride and is you're not just limited by your ability to ride a bike on your own. Storage, okay, storing this thing, I, I can appreciate that everyone's gonna have a garage necessarily to store it in. Um, for me, I put it right here, right behind this car and it's pretty close up against the wall and it's not that big of a deal. And some of you are asking, I've seen this on Reddit, I've seen it on Facebook, I've seen it on YouTube, people asking, can you park a cargo bike or store a cargo bike or any electric bike outdoors? I'm gonna say no, <laughs> I'm gonna say no. Even if it's not a threat of 
um, it being stolen, okay? So say you plan to have it in your backyard and it's behind a fence and no one knows it's there and you're gonna keep it locked there anyway and theft isn't an issue. It's the weathering. And even if you cover it up with a barbecue grill cover or wrap it in plastic, whatever, it's gonna rust eventually. <laughs> and as much as bikes are budget bikes these days, or a lot of the direct consumer bikes are budget bikes, and a lot of the bikes that people are looking to get to as their first e-bike are gonna be under $2,000. It's still a chunk of change for some people. It was for me. <laughs> and so you're gonna to wanna to take care of it. And then when pieces start to rust, it's not gonna perform well, I highly advise that you do not get a bike with the plan to store it outdoors. If you have the ability to store a bike indoors, if the bike is smaller, I highly, highly recommend that over a cargo bike and having it to store outdoors. Okay, and as I mentioned, the capability of carrying stuff, two panniers, a backpack, and two bags of groceries in the front basket, that's a total of six bags. That's more than able, okay? And other drawbacks of a cargo bike regarding the weight is the bike itself has to be heavier right because the cargo bikes are for storing cargo and for it to support this bike supports 400 pounds the frame is going to need to be beefier and therefore heavier okay people are like well it's an e-bike i don't care if it's that heavy well <laughs> how about the next topic which is going to be repairs and maintenance or transport a lot of e-bikers are going to be new to bikes in general. I know, you know how to ride a bike and you don't think it's that big of a deal. But some of you may not want to scour the internet looking at YouTube to learn how to maintain and work on the bike and repair. And you want to bring it to a bike shop. And that's totally fine. I can appreciate that. But please, please, before you buy any e-bike, whether it's a cargo bike or not, call that local bike shop or visit it and make sure they are okay with working on said e-bike because a lot of them will not want to touch it for liability reasons and the ones who do will only work on the mechanical portions of it and if you're bringing a cargo bike as opposed to a regular size bike here or there this takes up a lot of space and it's very hard to maneuver and at least in san francisco a lot of the bike shops are not that big and maneuvering this behind the counter <laughs> away from all the storage and sales items where they actually work on the bikes there's not a lot of space back there. And so I do not blame them for not accepting your cargo bike in the shop, at least for not for very long. So I highly, highly recommend again, that you determine a local bike shop that you plan to go to who will agree to work on whatever said bike that you're thinking about before you buy the bike, okay? If you're in a situation where you need to transport the bike, say it's not in working condition and you cannot ride it and you need to somehow get it to a bike shop that is further away than you can walk to, then you're gonna have a couple of choices. You can put it in a van, you can put it in a wagon, you can put it on a pickup truck. Either way, you're gonna have to lift it up or you're gonna have to buy a ramp and therefore store a ramp and get it up onto the car. And if you have a SUV or whatever and it's not gonna fit inside or you have car seats or you have other gear in there and, you, and, and putting a bike, a cargo bike inside the car is not an option, then you're gonna have to put it on a hitch and not all of you are gonna have a hitch rack for a car. And those hitch racks can be pretty expensive, especially ones that hold a capacity of say 60 to 90 pounds. And even if you have that hitch rack, you're good to go. And, oh, by the way, you gotta store the hitch rack, okay? My hitch rack is stored in this closet here, okay? So it's out of the way, but not everyone necessarily has space to store a hitch rack off the car and then People don't necessarily like keeping the hitch on their car because they need to access uh, the trunk or parking, parallel parking, maybe a little bit more difficult. So you really do need to think of all logistics, okay? So let's say you have a place to store the hitch rack, you've identified the hitch rack and you've identified an installer and you've done all that. <laughs> you still gotta get the bike on the hitch rack. You gotta lock it in place. You gotta keep it secure and you gotta bring it to the place. It, it becomes a bigger deal, okay? It's, people call this the the minivan of cars, okay? With a minivan, you can call your towing company and they can tow it to your mechanic and they can fix it, okay? Or if it's for maintenance items like oil change or whatever not, then you can just drive it there. But in this case, that may not always be feasible, okay? So we wanna think, please, please do think about that. All right, let's say you're one of those people like me who do wanna work on it yourselves. 
ourselves, myself, <laughs> and you're okay with looking up YouTube videos, you have some experience, you're mechanically inclined, you're okay kind of, you know, digging and searching and figuring out things on your own, working on a cargo bike is gonna be a lot more difficult than working on a standard sized e-bike, okay? Most of you, vast, vast majority of you, including myself, will not, does not have a bike stand that supports the weight of an e-bike, let alone a e-cargo bike. And so your, only, your real only option is going to be to turn the bike upside down. Okay, right, you're gonna take the batteries out and then you're gonna turn the bike upside down. How much harder is it to turn a cargo bike upside down to work on it versus a regular size e-bike? It is substantially harder, <laughs> okay? And before you think that, oh, you can just kind of prop the bike up on uh, a stool or something or whatever, as I did, um, removing the back wheel in this configuration or orientation is a lot tougher. It's easy for the wheel to come off because gravity is on your side, but when you're putting the wheel back on, which is a little bit more cumbersome, you're fighting gravity. Okay, there's a lot of hardware in here. There is the need to align the brake caliper with the rotor. At the same time, not bending the derailleur or derailleur hanger. It, it, it becomes a little bit cumbersome. I have a video on how to change the freewheel and how to change the brake pads on several e-bikes. So you can go over that to see exactly how difficult it is or isn't. But to me, it is a, it's an effort that is worth considering. Don't forget about parking an e-bike, a cargo e-bike, okay? Most parking bike racks, at least around my town, are not necessarily designed for cargo bikes. So you've seen the type where you're supposed to park it like in between like a row of upside down U-shaped things or a circle. You can't do that because you're not gonna slip in between because it's too wide or there's other bikes there. So you're gonna have to either hog up like four spaces or you're gonna find a new space for it. And when you get close to a pole or whatnot, it's gonna be difficult to maneuver your U-lock around it and you're gonna need a giant U-lock or you're gonna need a chain, okay? If you use a cinch style chain, which means it has a big circle on the end of it and you kind of feed one end through, it can effectively increase the usable length of the chain without having a full length of the chain and having it so heavy. But for chains, for cinch chains especially, you're gonna have a hard time storing it. Maybe you're gonna put it in the basket and you're gonna to have to figure out how not to make it rattle or you're gonna put it in the back or you are gonna carry a big U-lock. But that's really something to consider logistics wise that no one's going to tell you because they're too busy showing you riding footage that you want to see of people smiling on an e-bike. <laughs> okay, but there's some practicality that you need to know about as far as ownership of a cargo e-bike. I know some of you still don't believe me, so I'm gonna try to detail this out further. The reason why it's harder to lock the bike is because, one reason is because there's no top tube. Like a regular bike here, we have a top tube. You normally just lock this to the bike rack and you're done, whether it's a chain or a U-lock or whatnot. But because it's a cargo bike, it's designed as a step-through style so that you don't swing your leg over because you're generally you're not gonna wanna swing your leg over because you're gonna hit your cargo, whether it's live beings or the box load of stuff. So a lot of cargo bikes are gonna be a step-through design. And because of that, there's no top tube to lock your bike to. And you're not gonna be able to lock it here unless your U-lock is really that wide. And you can lock through here, but as you see, it's gonna be a bigger distance between here and the tube or what or pole or whatever you're locking the bike to. And again, a big size. So where you orient the bike versus the sidewalk versus other bikes, it's gonna be cumbersome. Another reason why it's harder to lock a cargo bike or an e-bike in general is because a lot of the e-bikes these days are going to be fat tire. These aren't quite four inches, but they are still wired wider than a standard bike tire. And so generally people would lock, if not the, the uh, top tube, they would lock either this seat tube or through here or through there to the pole or whatever stationary object. But in the case of a even this fat tire bike, you can't do that because your U-lock would have to be super, super long to get the depth or thickness of the tire itself. And when you have a cargo bike, not only do you have the fatter tire, but you have so much of the frame that you need to uh, navigate with your lock. And so 
hopefully you can understand now how locking a cargo bike is going to be a lot more difficult than locking a regular size e bike or a standard bike. Another thing we're talking about is range, okay? People get range anxiety even with cars with giant batteries. When they have a bike, they think that they need a lot of range. And most e-bikes, especially budget e-bikes, will not have a dual battery uh, option, all right? So single battery generally is gonna be between 15 amp hours and 20 amp hours. This is a dual battery version. This is electric uh, expedition and it has a total of 28 amp hours, which is fairly big. So if you're comparing between, if, you're, if you wanna maximize range, get a smaller bike. It weighs less, it's gonna require less power to haul its own weight um, versus a larger bike that will require more power and will be less efficient. And when you're riding this around town, or even if you're going to get groceries, when you're going to get groceries, the bike is empty, right? And so when you're coming back, then it's fully loaded. So the inefficiency of you simply going to get groceries exists here, whereas on something like this or something like that, it's not gonna be as inefficient. So keep that in mind. Handling, weight, transportability, uh, repairability, just maneuvering it around, getting on a hitch, it's all very cumbersome compared to a standard e-bike. I imagine, I imagine most of you will be able to handle your lives just fine with a regular non-cargo e-bike. Not a lot of you are necessarily gonna have two kids on here and you're probably just gonna have one and that might be an option, okay? So really, unless you absolutely, absolutely think you need a cargo bike, if you can get away with a regular bike that has a seating option in the back, that has a basket option in the back or the front or panniers, you're gonna be able to handle most of your needs. All right, that is it. <laughs> that is it. I'm, I'm not here to sell you the bike. I'm not here to tell you don't get the bike, but I do want you to consider all the things I've talked about before you spend your thousands of dollars on an e-bike that you're gonna have to store somewhere when it's not in use. All right, see you next time. Remember, stop at stop signs, be safe.